Once upon a time, Thai Airways was one of the biggest international airlines in Asia. Their Royal Orchid service was world renowned, but now the airline is hanging on by a thread. They were doing terribly financially before the pandemic. But after two years of border closures, the airline is truly a shell of its former self. Yet, they continue to operate a decent number of flights, including to almost all European Star Alliance gateways. So, I've been meaning to give them an updated review considering my last business class flight with them was in 2018. Is Thai Airways worth it nowadays? How much does the experience reflect the extremely poor financial state of the airline? Well, let's find out. Thanks, Remote, for sponsoring today's video. A word before we start. I never set out to create a negative video. It just happens that I've taken pretty many bad flights in a row lately. As always, I have high expectations, which you should have when reviewing luxury products. And in this case, today's flight was a pretty funky one. The flight time from Bangkok to London is usually 12 hours, but today, our flight was a staggering 17 hours long. How is that possible? Well, we had to take a little detour to pick up extra passengers in Thailand's beach tourist hotspot Phuket. So our flight would take us from Bangkok to Phuket in about an hour and a half. Then we'd stay on board for another hour and a half as the aircraft was prepared for the long haul leg to London. Then we'd have an additional 13 hour journey from Phuket to Heathrow. All in all, our total time in the seat with boarding in Bangkok was almost 17 hours. Big mistake on my part choosing this specific flight as you'll see soon. Part of the reason I chose this was that it happened to have a ward space on the date I needed to make it back to Sweden in time to see a show in Stockholm. So I booked two seats for a total of 99,000 SES miles one way and about $80 in taxes. In case you're wondering how I got it so cheap, I used a two for one voucher, which is offered on several SES credit cards in Sweden. You can learn more at the link in the description. After a heavenly 10 days in Thailand, reuniting with one of our besties after two years due to COVID and getting Patty certified, it was time to head back to Europe. Given our decent departure time, we didn't have to leave our hotel in Bangkok until 8.20 AM, getting to the airport at 8.50 right on time for our flight. my second time back in Thailand since the pandemic. I came here in November as well and it just feels so amazing to be back in one of my favorite countries on earth. So as you can imagine, it's very sad to be leaving. I was shocked when I saw the terminal. Thank God Subhanabhuma airport is a lot busier than it was the last time I was here in November. There were actually lines to check in for some airlines. <gasps> There's a special check-in area for Thai business class passengers all the way at the end. And since the airport is quite busy, it is appreciated. Now that the UK has removed almost all COVID-related travel restrictions, check-in was a breeze. What a contrast to flying the opposite direction from the UK or anywhere for that matter to Thailand. Business class passengers get to enjoy this swanky check-in area with a private security and immigration channel, letting you out right by the escalator to the lounge. Thai Royal Orchid Lounge is beautiful and features these comfy and private seating arrangements surrounded by fake greenery. There are plenty of comfy places to sit and surprisingly the lounge wasn't all that empty, which I guess makes sense since all Star Alliance Gold or business class passengers can access it. The food selection certainly left a lot to be desired compared to other East and Southeast Asian airline lounges, but I enjoyed a couple of taro steamed buns. Dim sum for me is just the best imaginable lounge food. After 30 minutes of chilling there, we headed to our gate E3. 
Bangkok's iconic main airport, which I still don't dare to pronounce because every time I somehow get it wrong, is walk intensive, but it's super nostalgic to explore these familiar halls. So, <laughs> I'm honestly a bit nervous for this flight, not because I think Thai Airways will be bad, absolutely not, but because it's a 17 hour journey. First, we have to fly down to Phuket, where we're stopping for an hour and a half on the plane, then continuing to London another 13 and a half hours. This will be the second longest I've ever spent on a plane at once. And uh, I mean, usually I'd be excited, but today we have no idea what the state of Thai Airways is like. So let's hope for the best. Despite the empty airport, people are starting to come back to Thailand. It's one of my favorite places to just stop to work and eat for a few weeks. I know a lot of you who watch my videos either work remotely or are looking to start working remotely. How about a free definitive guide like this, I Choose Remote Guide, on how to start working remotely either independently or through your employer. You can get it through today's video sponsor, Remote, who, as the name suggests, specialize in remote work. If you're looking for your next place to work remotely, remote Remote also created a best destinations for remote work tool. You can filter among seven different factors that are most important to match your personal remote work style. This generates a personalized list of the best places for you to work remotely. It also includes remote work incentives if you're looking for a more permanent move. Now what about if you run a business and want to hire employees in other countries? Remote has you covered. With them, you don't have to become an expert in the labor laws of multiple countries. Their local experts use their knowledge and experience to keep your company compliant with all local laws. They also let you easily manage payroll, benefits, taxes, stock options, and local compliance for your people in other countries. Get started or download your free remote work guide at the link at the top of the description and add code nonstop to get your first employee for free for 12 months and two months free for any additional employees onboarded during their first year. Finally, there she was. Our Boeing 777-300ER taking us from Bangkok to London. Thai Airways has a total of 42 business class seats on this beauty, spread across two cabins in a 1-2-1 configuration. The seat they use is staggered, so they alternate between being close to the window, close to the center, or close to the aisle. The most private seats are those in the odd-numbered rows closer to the windows, like my seat 17A. The even-numbered rows lack privacy and aren't ideal. In the middle, you have some nice honeymoon seats which are really fun when traveling with a companion, so I'd probably choose those if traveling with someone else over the window seats on an overnight flight. A quick note, economy class on Thai's 777 is still in a spacious 333 layout. Stay tuned to see those seats. Hello, Welcome on board. What do you guys think of the cabin color scheme and ambiance? I'm torn, so I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. This is my seat, and I gotta say, it is a great one. Iberia, Garuda Indonesia, and Asiana use this seat among others, so it's pretty popular. I'd say it's above average, with plenty of foot space and plenty of width by the shoulders. The tray table extends from in front of you in a rather quirky fashion, and the best thing is that you can push it aside and get out to go to the bathroom even when it's down. There isn't much space in terms of storage, but the surface on the side should be more than enough. The remote is also here along with seat controls which feature a massage function. Don't get too excited picturing some sort of Thai massage on an airplane here, but you do get a little movement to increase the blood flow. I just need to expose nonstop then. He intentionally put me in the worst seat. I'm <laughs> further away from the window, what is this? <laughs> on a 17 hour flight, there's no doubt you'll need to charge a few devices. There are two USB ports and a power port so you can leave the flight with more battery than when you boarded. I was glad to see there was pre-departure service in Bangkok, consisting of a disinfectant wipe and a choice between three or four different drinks. Whenever an airline has a signature drink, you know I give bonus points. And oh boy, Thai scores high on the list with their butterfly pea drink. It's sort of a juice, but also sort of a lemonade, and it's amazing. My god, does it contain a lot of sugar, and my god, do I like it. Anyway, let's get out of here. 
check out the tragic lineup of Thai aircraft that are out of service as we depart. By the way, this recent subscriber is the latest of over a dozen to have won a $100 gift card with an airline of their choice. All you have to do is subscribe, it takes literally a second. You could be the next to win an awesome travel related prize. Now, I had been warned that the entertainment system on Thai is in serious need of some injection. Obviously, when your finances are this weak, entertainment is not going to be a priority, and I get that. I'm glad I was warned beforehand so I could download some audiobooks and copious episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm, though. In all honesty, I didn't find the movie selection too bad. The TV show selection, on the other hand, isn't it funny how an airline on the brink of bankruptcy still manages to get multiple episodes of each show, while some airlines somehow insist on having one little episode of a series? What is the point? To accompany the entertainment, Ty had these noise-canceling headphones for all business class passengers to use during the flight, which are pretty decent. Now, the biggest drawback of this entire flight, I gotta say, is the lack of Wi-Fi. Three or even two years ago, I would have said, who needs Wi-Fi on a plane? Chill out. Now, I've realized that being disconnected for 17 hours is far from ideal, especially on a daytime flight where you have lots of work to do. The flight to Phuket went by in the blink of an eye, and we even had a little go-around at 3,000 feet, which I enjoyed, all due to a tiny ATR landing in front of us. Once on the ground in rainy Phuket, almost everyone disembarked while Oscar and I, along with maybe a dozen other people in total, stayed on board. Clearly, this isn't a very popular way to fly from Bangkok to London. So, now's the start of an hour and a half here on the ground in Phuket. It's still illegal to serve food or drink on domestic flights in Thailand due to COVID, so the crew handed out goodie bags after landing. The snack was this little… I don't know what to call this. In any case, it wasn't good. Sadly, this is what Thai served in business class between Bangkok and Phuket just five years ago. The good old days, huh? During our stop in Phuket, I checked out the lavatories which were well stocked and maintained. I especially love this massive sink. After that, I checked out economy class which looked quite nice. Gotta love that 333 configuration rather than the common 343 that most airlines use nowadays. I also got to see the rear business class cabin. This section is a little smaller than the forward one, but I prefer the cabin between door 1 and door 2 for the added privacy during boarding. Maybe a hundred or so people got on in Phuket and then we were off to London, baby. Thai's safety videos is one of my favorites. Welcome to Royal Orchid Service. Leaving a rainy paradise to go to sunny London? What is happening to the world? At this point, I was well knackered because I hadn't eaten all day. Thankfully, the meal was served just 40 minutes after takeoff. I was so excited to eat, but don't think it escaped me that everything from starter to dessert was served on one tray. I'm assuming this is COVID related, but damn, school cafeteria vibes anyone? The food tasted okay and the portion was at least pretty decent. I think the dessert was a coconut pandan jelly type of thing and that was my favorite. You may be asking, Dan, why haven't you shown us the menu yet? Don't worry, I would have shown you the menu if there was one. After the meal, I made sure to check out the amenity kit. I find it funny that out of all things, Thai prioritizes branded amenity kits. Although I will say these mandarina duck kits are pretty nice. The contents were mostly on the more rare side like a comb and mouthwash, but I have one question. Where's the eye mask? Where are the earplugs? I guess that's two questions. 
I asked the crew and they provided them on request, which is good to know. You also get some slippers, which is always convenient. To be honest, I was still hungry, so I asked if they had any snacks. Apparently they had almonds and sandwiches, which is a funny snack combo. They'd catered vegan sandwiches for Oscar and me, but I'm seriously starting to wonder what the deal is with airlines and sandwiches nowadays. I don't remember sandwiches being such a big thing pre-pandemic, and now everyone serves them, but they all taste terrible. Can Marks and Spencer come in and consult airlines on how to do proper sandwiches? As we cruised over India and eventually reached the border with Pakistan, I got a whole bunch of work done. There wasn't much else to do, so I edited, wrote scripts, and let me tell you. I've taken about a dozen flights over 12 hours in my life, but never a day flight like this. Especially with a total of 17 hours on board, no less. I love flying more than 99.9% .9 of people. Aviation is my love and my passion, but seriously, 17 hours of daytime flying is brutal. It really feels never ending. Business class may be comfortable, but 17 hours is still 17 hours. If it hadn't been that I wanted to review a flight in daytime, I would have absolutely chosen one of the midnight departures from Bangkok instead, allowing for two meals and a solid eight hours of sleep to pass the time. Much better, plus you save the money you would have used on a hotel. With six and a half hours left to London, after almost half the flight, I decided to take a break from working and cuddle up with an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm in bed. Just as I was going to ask for the turndown service, the flight attendant asked me what I'd like to drink with dinner. I said, dinner? I don't even know her. No, I actually said, what? When is dinner? In 15 minutes, sir. This is another benefit of menus or at least having some sort of explanation because otherwise on airlines that don't have dine on demand, you have no idea what is going on, when meals are gonna be served, and it's hard to plan your time, even though 17 hours is a lot of time. <laughs> what a strange and unique meal schedule. I was just curious, with almost seven hours to go, was this it in terms of meal service? No more food for that many hours? Well, not quite, as you'll see. The meal they ended up serving was almost identical to the one served five hours prior. What on earth? Luckily, I'd ordered the oriental option for myself and the western one for Oscar, so we ended up switching. His was the same as the first meal too. Strange. Finally, I was at least truly full. Now, the service throughout the flight was pretty hands-off and minimal, but the crew were friendly and came within 10 seconds each time I pressed the crew call bell. There was also a problem with the second meal. The food was frozen. They were apologetic and all, but I didn't get Thai hospitality from the experience. After the meal, it was time for some more entertainment, this time in bed. Thai provides turndown service, which consists of the crew putting this relatively thick and comfy mattress pad on the bed. The bed itself is quite comfy with above average room to move your body and a lot of privacy in these odd rows. The same can't be said for the even numbered rows, sadly. As you can see, the footrest is basically in the aisle. We still had a painful five hours to go at this point, so I looked out the windows and continued working. Finally, we reached Turkey and enjoyed some breathtaking views. Now, let's go back to food. It turned out that the sandwich I'd eaten earlier was actually my pre-landing snack, so disappointingly, there was nothing more to eat. Thankfully, after an additional four long hours overflying Turkey, Romania, Hungary, Austria, Germany, and finally Belgium, we saw the British coast. During our landing at Heathrow, we were treated to breathtaking sunset views. How great is it that the sun is finally setting so late in Europe again? Now, what do I think of Thai's international business class? Well, if you've flown a European or North American airline in business class, I think you'll really enjoy Thai. If you've flown Middle Eastern Airlines or any of the good East or Southeast Asian airlines like Singapore Airlines, Garuda Indonesia, EVA, China Airlines, ANA, etc., you'll probably be a little underwhelmed. 
Not that the experience is bad, but it's more on par with European airlines like Austrian or Air France. I probably even prefer Finnair over this personally, but Thai Airways business class is absolutely not a bad way to fly. With that, I'll see you all in my next video, which will be a very special one. Until then, fly safe, my friends. Love you, bye.